today I'm about to talk to y'all about one of the hardest yet most zesty ass arcs in Baki that I have seen to date. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, I read the manga. So I've been waiting on this day. Today we are here to talk about Pickle and how he violated everyone in Baki. This Pickle is different. So first and foremost, I gotta start off with this man Pickle. I gotta explain to y'all what Pickle is. This is not Pickle Rick. This is not no Rick and Morty shit. This is not no salted vegetable, bro. No, this is a pure, unadulterated man, a Neanderthal, a caveman. Y'all seen them Geico commercials? They made those niggas after this nigga bro this guy pickle is different so pickle is somebody that came from a time where there were dinosaurs now real quick science lesson dinosaurs were alive millions and millions and millions of years before humans were and for those of you that are religious and don't believe in evolution i'm gonna keep you guys out of this conversation because that has nothing to do with you i'm not going to talk bad about your religion However, I'm not about to act like science doesn't exist. Now, dinosaurs and man never crossed paths, but in this fiction, in this timeline of Baki, this nigga Pickle was fighting dinosaurs. I'm talking T-Rexes, Brachiosauruses. I'm talking Stephalodons, Beckelodons, Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> This man was fighting huge ass dinosaurs, bro, with his bare hands. And look at his toenails. This motherfucker need a Manny and a Petty, I'm just saying. So Pickle is in the air, oh, he's very powerful, that's all you need to know. These dumbass dudes decided to unthaw him in a dead T-Rex body, which to me is insane, because why would you unthaw a man that was seen fighting, fist fighting that is, a fucking Tyrannosaurus Rex? Bro was out here fighting the Zord of the Red Ranger and y'all unthawed him? This scientist right here is an asshole. Look at this little dweeb ass dude with glasses out here looking like white Steve Urkel. You gonna let this man out of this ice prison he was in? And that was your first mistake. Look at him, shaking, trembling. Bro, this man woke up and he got to straight business. He was hungry, he wanted to eat. He wanted food. And that is all that this man cares about. He treats regular fights as meal opportunities. He goes to hoods to scrap with people and then he eats them. That is what this dude does. Look at this shit right here. Oh my God. Uh, uh, what the fuck do we do? Why do we unfreeze this guy? I, oh fuck it, bro. I don't know what to do, bro. Okay, 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 I know what I'll do. If there's a gun in my drawer, I'll get the gun out. It's a Glock 9 with an extended clip and a, and a, and a green dot. Oh fuck, someone took the monkey nuts from me. They left me with this dumbass gun. Oh shit, this pea shooter's not gonna do anything. No, 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 no. What, what do you mean? What, what, is, what does that mean, bro? What does that mean? What the fuck? Your breath is really hot right now. I have some five gum in, in my pocket. Oh, let me. Oh, okay, I won't reach for it. I'm gonna have to shoot this guy. Do I? Do I shoot him? And right here, this guy puts four. No, wait, wait. Three holes in this guy, bro. Straight point blank range shoots three holes in this dude pickle. I mean, flesh. And it doesn't penetrate his abs, bro. This dude got the abs of Channing Tatum or something. This motherfucker. Yo, pause on that. This dude can't get shot. Now, I'm not going to lie, if he had a 50 cal, bro, and it was point blank range and you shot him in the head, that probably would have worked. I'm not going to lie. But this man was out here with this pea shooter doing no damage. I'm not going to lie. I felt bad for him at first, but then I started thinking about it. And I was like, mm, no, you're a dumbass. You shouldn't have unfrozen him anyway. After this, this man Pickle runs rampant. Starts throwing police officer cars everywhere. Look at this dude, he's throwing cars. Bro, you need to bring the Avengers in for this nigga, bro. Bring the Hawk in for this motherfucker. If somebody gotta fight him that's a superhero because there's no way that we're about to stop a guy that is throwing, casually I may add, cars. No! This motherfucker get bored and he throw cars like he's playing with Hot Wheels. That is not somebody you need to be scrapping. So what happens after this, you may ask? Well, you know, it's Baki. So just like any other natural season of Baki, big guy comes, he's strong. Everybody in the series wants a piece of this dude. And I mean that in the most oh zesty way God. possible. They be having full blown crushes on him. First, we gotta talk about Retsu. This man, Retsu, had a crush on this dude to the point he was going and talking to his homies about him. Him and Baki had a whole sit down about this nigga. Baki, I, 
I'm in love. What, what you mean you in love? Aki, I, I saw him. <sighs> saw who, bro? What are you talking about? Did you go to that Usher concert? Man, ever since he danced on Kiki Palmer, no, I no, no, not not Usher. Pickle. Uh, pickle. Pickle. You talking about, about the caveman? caveman? Oh, oh my god. god. What the fuck? Why are you falling in love with a fucking <sighs> Calm down, Baki, because this dude clearly done slipped and bumped his head. I don't know why Steven Seagal Ponytail is in love with this guy. And that's not my business. That's not my business. Baki, listen. First of all, I can hear your thoughts. I, I am gay. But that's besides the point. What I am trying to say is I'm in love. I I need a piece of this guy. I have to fight him. There's just some fights you have to do, Baki. This is one of them. I'm sorry, but I won't fight you until I fight Pickle. What the fuck? So you're going to turn me down? Yujiro Hanma's son for Pickle? Okay, so this motherfucker got me fucked up, bro. I, I, I see that I'm going to have to fight this dude eventually, but I'm going to let you fight him first and get your ass beat since that's what you want to do. Fuck out here, bro. Stupid ass ponytail and shit. Thank you for Steven Skull and shit. Hey, I heard that. Good, Good motherfucker. motherfucker. Now, after this, Ratsu does some of the most zesty shit that I've seen in this series thus far. But before that, let's rewind a little bit. And talk about how this man Pickle showed up with armed military bodyguards, basically. And he's walking through the, uh, what seems to be a mall, an airport. I don't know what the fuck. I, I can't remember, but it doesn't matter. He's walking through this place, and this dude got... I ain't gonna lie, he got some fly ass clothes on. I ain't gonna hold you. This man was out here looking all right and all that. But they got this dude on the news. And I'm thinking to myself, what could possibly happen? They're just walking. There's no problem with that. And then the news broadcast picked this up. <laughs> what? Uh, boss, boss, I think he's saying he wants to stop by the McDonald's in the food court. Motherfucker, you just wanna stop by McDonald's. I mean, yeah, but come on, it's Monday. I want a Big Mac. Motherfucker, they don't even do daily specials no more. Were you born in the 70s? Yes. God damn it. Breaking news. We bring you a very, very crazy, crazy event right now. There is a caveman walking through this airport. And Jesus Christ, look at this dude towering over six feet. Hey, hey, hey wait, wait a minute. Wait a six, six feet, feet not even that tall. tall. Motherfucker, we're Asian. Oh, 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 all right, my fault. And I just can't help but see that this this is crazy, guys. We have a true dinosaur time human being just walking around. And wait, wait a minute, he seems to be. Is he? Hey, someone might want to go over there. I think he's assaulting a woman. Is is he trying to raise her up? That's what the kids say, right? And at this moment, I'm thinking to myself, why is he grabbing this woman like this? And they don't show it on screen, but. <clears throat> This nigga great her, bro. Oh my god. If you're a channel original, then you should understand that I did a video on Redo of Healer and I used the word grape because, you know, I don't want to say the actual word. But you know, grape, when you force someone to do something that they don't want to do, you feel me in, in the sexual way. That is what he did to this woman. Someone please stop him. Bro, it was four grown men punching this nigga trying to get him off. And he still just did what he wanted to. They're talking about he from a primitive time. And that they, 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 they do things differently back then. Motherfucker, we not excusing this. I need somebody to put hands and feet on him expeditiously because there ain't no way matter of fact I, I, I do got a part three of that prison video coming up this man pickle might be on that list i ain't gonna care but after seeing this monstrosity on the news i realized that this man pickle is a demon a pure unadulterated menace and he needs to be stopped this motherfucker don't got black forces he got black tims on he is a problem but you know what else is a true problem? The fact that we're about halfway through this video and uh, uh, editor, what haven't they done yet? Subscribe. You motherfuckers need to subscribe. What are you doing? Exactly. Hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, you a long time watcher that just hasn't subscribed. What is it? What's holding you back? What's holding you back? Do you need you need a couple dollars or something? I'm just saying, because motherfucker, how you gonna watch this content all the time and not hit subscribe? Not click the post notifications. You ain't even leave a like or comment. That is out of pocket. I'm out here working day after day. I'm dropping video after video. And y'all bitch ass nick. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I got carried away. Um, Duaji, will you please inform them really quick what happens if they do not subscribe to the channel? Look, I want you guys to know that I'm not an idiot. Last video, I said, if you didn't subscribe, your bitch will get taken. And what did you guys not do? Subscribe. Look, you're still not subscribed. So we're going to take it up a notch. You obviously don't care about your girl getting taken. 
Guess what? Next up is your auntie. Yeah, you heard me right. Me and my nigga Sensei is gonna take everybody who's watching this video right now not to subscribe to aunties on dates. And I'm not gonna lie, you don't wanna know what me and my nigga Sensei be doing on the first date. Oh, and on top of that, you'll be a bitch. So if you sat through all of that and you're still not subscribed, you know where you are. You heard him. You're a bitch. Now, back to the video. Ratsu sneaks in to meet this guy. And this is when I knew that he was a true zesty ass dude. Because what do you mean you're sneaking in somewhere to have a physical bout with a grown ass man? And not only him, but nine other combatants snuck in with the same idea, bro. Katsumi is there. I, I think that's how you say his name. And, and that's Dopo Orochi's son. And I'm not going to cap to you. The way that this man, Yujiro, really had these niggas looking dumb in here is a spectacle. This man, Yujiro, walked in and started talking crazy to him. What's up with y'all ugly ass nigga? Hey, what's good with y'all, man? Y'all out here looking like the winning fighters on the championship ugly team, ain't you? Hey, oh, that's Kasumi. What's up, bro? Uh, what's good, you, Jiro? Hey, man, nothing. Just chilling, observing that you're a bitch. How you gonna be out here? Don't you think your dad gonna fuck with you? You thinking to yourself, man, if I just do a little bit, you know, you know, I, if I don't die, he'll look up to me, he'll, he'll respect me. No, man, you motherfucker, you gonna get folded in this bitch. I don't even know why you here. Everybody here smell the fear on you, boy. I don't know if that's fear or the fact that you shit yourself already. <laughs> oh yeah, you definitely had a bowel movement. Oh, oh my God. What, you need some baby wipes? <laughs> hey, look, man, I'm about to go see what's up with him. All of y'all, chill out here, you feel me? And watch how a real man handles this situation. Look at these bitches out here, man. This shit don't make no damn sense. And this man, Yujiro, walks through what seems to be, what is, did he walk through glass? And then it snapped back in place like it never broke. Bro, I don't know how this man, Yujiro, did this. He be breaking the laws of physics every time. But him and this goddamn dude, Pickle, shared a fist bump that was magnificent. These niggas touch fist and you just see glowing white like you're about to go see Jesus. I don't know what the fuck was going on in there, but they clearly have superpowers. I'm just saying. Now, after this fist bump happens and Yujiro realizes that this man is a goddamn menace, I mean, a goddamn physical specimen. He's like, oh, okay. And he just leaves. I don't know what's more crazy. The fact that Yujiro did all of this and just dipped, like he, this dude wasn't even a challenge to him. But the fact that when he came in, he had three guards, three grown ass men beating each other up. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that to you guys. He had three grown ass guards punching on each other. This motherfucker got the force or something. Yo. He Jedi mantra them. I don't know how he did that shit. Anyway, that's besides the point. We are now at Red Suit versus Pickle. The most embarrassing fight ever, bro. I'm not gonna lie. All of these fights are low-key embarrassing to me because Pickle destroyed everybody. The only one that kind of put up a fight was Jack a little bit, but even that was embarrassing and we'll get to that. So this man, Retsu, wanted to bring in the 4,000 and first 4,000 and I gotta stutter over that. A year of Kung Fu. Because there's 4,000 years of Kung Fu. Da, da, da. Shut up, Steven Seagal. This motherfucker can't do anything besides get punished, bro. He got in here doing all these dumbass fancy moves, and it didn't mean a damn thing. Bro, this dude Pickle slapped him into a wall, and he knew at that instant. Oh, yeah, I don't fucked up. <sighs> I'm so ready to fight. <sighs> I keep anticipating this. My body is swelling my, my loins. <sighs> Fight balls. Shut up. What are you what are you talking about? Does anybody speak caveman? Um he said that your ponytail reminds him of Steven Seagal and that you're not fooling anyone. We all know you're gay. What motherfucker? Alright. Alright. How do you like this? And this dude smacks him dead into a wall, bro. Thank God he had his guard up. I'm not gonna lie, he might have died. Now, after this, I thought for a minute that Retsu was actually putting that pain in because he was hitting this dude with all types of combos. I ain't gonna lie, the tactics that he was using, the strategy, the, 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 the maneuvers, they were actually doing something. I'm like, okay, Retsu, you out here fucking this dude up. Retsu even thought himself that he had this dude's brain rattling. Then we learned something very important uh, about this dude. And I can't lie to you, it's kind of scary. Basically, he has the spinal cord and neck of uh, what would be like 
I don't know, an oxen or something. And what I mean by that is you can't really give him a concussion, can't really rattle his brain with normal techniques. Uh, we learned this later when Jack Hanuma, the fucking PED specimen he is, punches him with all he has and he eats it. And you know, once we learned that, I pretty much thought that this dude was unstoppable. Because I don't know if you guys, you know, watch Baki or anything, but they usually be making niggas pass out because they're rattling their brain. But this dude sees everybody as a meal and he can't be rattled. Bro, this dude took a big ass chunk out of Red Shoe like he was a pork loin. He literally bit his shoulder while crying. Ain't no way that this motherfucker is eating him and crying at the same time. Bro, I don't know why he's crying, bro. That must have been a good ass meal. I have never ate a meal and cried, but I need to. But after this, it was all downhill, bro. It was so bad that Retsu started using a windmill attack on him. He started fighting like a zesty nigga at an Atlanta club. Bro was throwing windmills through all types of skills out the window. Completely evaporated his knowledge of Kung Fu and started trying to hit him with anything he could. This is embarrassing. Oh, this motherfucker think he nice, huh? He think that you gonna beat me? Hey, that This the name my father gave me. My mother gave me. Motherfucker, I'm about to eat your ass. I swear to God. What the fuck did you say? He, he said, said shut, shut your, your crying, crying ass, ass up. up. Oh, 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 oh. And this was embarrassing, bro. He started punching this dude, and this man was confused. Pickle was standing there like, run, 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 run. and honestly, I could translate that as, bro, what the fuck is going on with this nigga, bro? It was purely embarrassing, bro. Very embarrassing. But the most embarrassing thing about this is once this man Retsu started actually fighting back and using his Kung Fu, after having a Susano moment where his inner self was talking to him, motherfucker out here, you think you, uh, she high or something? Uh, anyways, he actually sees Retsu as a formidable opponent. Listen to a quadruped like position where he's on all fours and then launches at this dude and sends him flying through a hallway. Bro, I've never seen someone fly like that in Baki, bro. He sent the dude flying at what seems to be goddamn light speed or something. This motherfucker sent him into a wall. He is a physical specimen. This is the move he used to use on T-Rexes. So obviously, Retsu did not want that smoke. I thought that it wasn't going to get any worse than this. I'm like, all right, he beat Retsu up. This is where Baki will fight him. It'll be like four or five episodes. Nah, that's definitely not happening. You know what did happen, though? This man Katsumi was up next and thought that he could fight him. Even though Yujiro already told you you're a bitch. Now, I'm not going to lie. Katsumi actually did his thing. He came back, reignited, revived. Just to get folded by this man Pickle. Bro, I'm not gonna hold you, bro. This man Pickle was out here really destroying shit. After he beat Retsu up, by the way, forgot to mention this a minute ago, but um, he, he ate, ate his, his leg. leg. Yeah, this motherfucker Retsu has a peg leg now. This motherfucker out here looking like Patsy the Pirate on some shit. Bro is out here walking around with a handicap sticker on. Bro is out here looking like the dude with the peg leg and family guy. No, 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 not you, Seamus. Ah, sea turds. Look at this dude's leg. Bro, I couldn't even believe what I saw, but I was like, they made this man Retsu a goddamn paraplegic. They made this man an amputee, bro. What the fuck? Guess who else was an amputee? Yep, that's right. Katsumi. Bro, he beat the shit out of this nigga, too. Bro, they're fighting in a damn arena, bro. Bro out here thinking that he was about to use this damn whip punch and that it was going to be the thing that saved him from getting pounced on. Like he's a gazelle to a lion. And yet, that's not what happened. What did happen was this man Katsumi got punished. At some point in the fight, he decided that he was going to use his whip punch against Pickle when he launched at him. And then this happened. Man, man fuck, fuck this shit, cuz. This dude has been beating my ass. Wait a minute. Is he? Oh, shit. He's in that pouncing position again. Oh, that's when he sent Retsu through the hallway. Okay, all right. It's time. I got to use this whip punch. I have been training my bones, my muscles for this moment. At mock speed, I'm about to hit this nigga. And when I do, I'm going to win the fight. I got this. <laughs> What the fuck did he say? He said, he said he's, he's about, about to hit you with the spear that Edge be using in WWE. What, what the fuck? Oh, hell no. Nah. And this dude launches at him, bro. And in that moment, he uses the whip punch and hits him. And then we see this dude laying down and we're like, oh my God, he actually did it. And then Katsumi realized that his fucking whip punch 
was not made out of concrete bones. They're regular bones, they're regular flesh. Look, Look at this nigga's hand. hand. Look at his arm right now, bro. It is busted open. He had to use a fucking belt that he had on to make a tourniquet so he didn't bleed out. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Then he gonna walk over to this man Pickle like he won the fight. Put his hand in the air like he really did something. Everybody's standing around like, um, did he did win? He win? I, I, I think he did win. Wait, wait, I think he did. Oh, that motherfucker did win. Oh, shit. Yeah. And right before we thought this motherfucker did win, they spoke too soon, bro. This motherfucker went to sleep because he saw this man as a meal. Once he defeats somebody, he just wants to conserve energy because there's no point in fighting something that's already dead. He saw this man Katsumi as being dead, bro. So what did Katsumi do? He let this nigga eat his arm. Bro, you know you got completely bitched when you give up a limb to a dude, bro. And then his dad showed up and wouldn't even let him tranquilize the guy. Thank God this man Pickle has his humanity and didn't completely destroy this dude and eat him whole. Pause on that, by the way. That's crazy. But it, it, they literally let this man's arm get eaten out. Now he's an amputee too. This nigga is Shanks. This nigga is Mega Man now. Bro, I couldn't even believe that shit. This man was just out here completely trying to eat people. This shit was out of pocket. Do you know what was more out of pocket? Him and Jack Hanma's fight. Because I'm not going to lie to you. This shit is where everything got even more zesty. Because this man Jack Hanma thought, yo, I ain't going to lie. I fight this nigga cuz I'm gonna have a bite off. Hey, yo, a, a bite, bite off. off. Bro, I knew that this shit was mad zesty when this dude Jack Kama shows up to fight him. Punches him with all he got. Realizes that it didn't do anything to him. And his next thought wasn't, and I ain't gonna lie, I'm about to leave. It was, all right, I ain't gonna hold you. I like this nigga teeth. I'm about to have a mouth to mouth fight with him. Bro, Baki was on the phone flabbergasted. What you mean? He in there doing what? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. This motherfucker over here kissing him mouth to mouth. Mouth to mouth. My brother. Oh, nah. Oh, this is embarrassing. This is devastating, man. This man Hadayama over there talking to him like, hey, what happened, God? Oh, my God. Bro, this dude, Jack Hanuma, was having a mouth off with a grown Neanderthal. Look at this shit. Bro, at this point, I'm thinking to myself, bro, they calling him Jack Hammer because he hammering dudes. I'm just saying. Because that ain't no way you done took all these PDs and done changed your whole body structure so you can have a mouth-to-mouth -mouth goddamn resuscitation fight against another grown man just to get your face ripped off. Yeah, that's right. This man Pickle ripped his whole face off. Look at this motherfucking face. God damn. Bro, you out here looking like them joints they use in science class. You know them joints in the book, though, the human anatomy. That's what your face look like right now. Because what the fuck? Are you out here looking like fresh meat? Like you just came out of a deli section. Like somebody went to the counter like, hey, yo, can I get two pounds of that jackhammer? <laughs> yo, pause on that two pounds of that jackhammer. Yo, that was crazy. I ain't gonna lie. Who's more zesty, me or this show? <laughs> nah, it's this show. I ain't gonna lie. But anyways, yo, this man Jack, after realizing that his face is ripped off, starts fighting back as much as he can. After completely catching this man Pickle's spear like he's Edge or Goldberg or something, and he throws this dude 60 feet. Hold on, what the narrator said? 65 feet into the damn arena. Everybody is watching and thinking that Jack is actually going to win this fight. They're like, hold on, this nigga Jack is actually putting that pain in. Bro was talking to himself in an inner dialogue. Yeah, what you think about humankind now? We evolved, huh? It's different on this side, ain't it, bitch ass nigga? Yeah, yeah. Motherfucker getting turned on while losing. I'm not gonna lie, cause he was doing all that for nothing. He then bites this dude's ear off. Yo, Pickle, you good? <laughs> what did he say? He said, he said nah, nah, nigga, I'm not I'm good. good. This, this nigga, nigga bit my bit ear off. Bro, bro think he Mike Tyson? Tyson? Bro, this dude Jack bit his ear, bro, and spit it in his hand. This put Pickle on high alert. At this point, he was not letting Jack do nothing to him. He was dodging this nigga like a damn cat. I am not gonna lie, his reflexes and speed are unfathomable. Cause what the fuck, where did he go? Bro must have been moving at the speed of light or something, yo. He was going too fast. Bro was moving so fast, he had enough time to dodge Jack's hits and then springboard himself back to the same position? Oh nah, I'm not fighting anybody that's doing no shit like that. That's out of fucking pocket. Nah, that's out of orbit. So after Jack completely is unconscious, the little ass dude walk up to him and almost gets his eardrums clapped. I'm not gonna cap. And the last act of being a dickhead, this man Jack made it. So if this dude got any close to him, 
He could do the ultimate fuck you and put his finger and his eardrums. But the little ass commissioner walked up so that didn't happen. And Jack went in a coma and then woke up to fight him again. But this time it was even more embarrassing. This dude Pickle was running from Jack and I was like, how the fuck is he running from a nigga he can beat up? And it's because he ain't never seen no enemy like this. But none of that mattered because as soon as he got close to Pickle, he knocks him the fuck out again. Bro, he hit this man Jack Kama into a complete cartwheel, bro. He hit this dude and he spun about 34 times. I'm not gonna lie. How the fuck did he spin like this? He treated him like a Beyblade. All of that just to get punished and wake up in the same hospital bed you were just at. That is insane. Cause nigga, why the fuck didn't you just give up the first time? The most embarrassing thing about this is when this man Pickle beat Jack up, he took him and hid him somewhere. He tied him up so we could eat him later. Like he was taking care of a meal that he was about to cherish. This man, Jack, got punished. I'm not gonna lie. How did you get beat up like this? You know, damn sense. R.I.P. Kyle. That motherfucker got dropped. We're finally here, y'all. Baki versus Pickle. I knew that this fight was gonna be crazy right off the bat because this man, Baki, was literally sitting pretzel style in front of Pickle, ready for the smoke. Bro was breathing in the same air as this nigga. Living in the same air as this nigga. Not eating, not sleeping, not shitting. No, just staring at this dude. I knew that he wanted to smoke and that's why when he got tired of waiting, he walked dead over to Pickle. And I'm tired of waiting for this motherfucker. Damn, bullshit, bro. I've been standing here for about three days now. Utopia just dropped. Travis Scott joined that shit ass. There's only so much music I can listen to on Spotify. Man, all right, I'm about to beat this nigga ass. Hey, yo, Pickle, what's good? Hey, look, I'm about to slap you in the face really gently because you're a bitch, all right? See? You're a bitch. And right at this moment, this man Pickle lost his damn mind. And hold on real quick, Duwaji. Can we pause this real quick? We got to look at this frame because this man just went from hero to zero in 1.2 seconds. Bro is ugly as fuck right here in his frame. Why does he look like this? Bro went from <laughs> was good to <laughs> bro out here talking like Gaspacho from Chowder. Motherfucker talking about rada, 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 rada. This motherfucker is ugly. Bro got hit in the face with the shovel. My man could have peek up off of Uvo again. Huh? No cap. Motherfucker, what you just say? Oh shit. How you gonna push me across the room, you bitch? And right then, Baki kicked this dude dead in his neck and the fight was on. I'm not gonna lie, at this point, I could see the skill gap. It was immense. That skill gap was as wide as your baby mom's front two teeth. I'm not gonna lie. And I know them joints why, cause I could put my whole meat through it. I'm just saying, field goal? Nah, I'm just playing y'all. But this shit is crazy. This man Baki kicked him in the neck and then jumped on his back, put him in a rear neck and choked. Bro, he was choking this man Pickle out like it was domestic abuse. I felt bad for Pickle. Yo, Pickle, you good? Man, what the fuck he just say? He said, he said hell no, nah, nigga, I'm not good. good. Why the fuck is this dude squeezing my neck like this? And this man Pickle starts panicking and does what any other rational person would do in this instance. Start squirming. If I'm getting choked out, I'm going to try everything I can to slam my motherfucking body on him so he can get up off me. And that's exactly what Pickle did, except for it was about... Damn, that's about 30 feet up in the air. And he body planted directly down onto Baki. I knew that this man Baki was in immense pain because he's standing there. You ever hit your pinky toe or ankle on the end of your bed and that shit hurts so much that you just walk around and don't say nothing? That's the pain that this man Baki was in in this instant. He was in so much pain he couldn't move or talk. He had niggas in the crowd talking about it. God damn! Yo, 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 you think Bobby all right? I don't think he's good. That fuck was crazy. God, God damn! damn. And, and, and how do you, you, you think he all right though? Like, you, you gonna survive it? Motherfucker, his pupils aren't even in his eyes right now. He is gone. Man, hell yeah, I ain't gonna lie. That shit out of pocket. He dropped that nigga Baki from the sky, no parachute. I think that man might be dead. Yo, yo Baki, you are? Hell no, God. Man, Pickle didn't even know what was going on. He's a Neanderthal. This dude got a literal IQ of a fucking gerbil. So he has no idea what's happening right now. He just knows something is wrong with him. So he goes to go touch this man, Baki. And all Baki can do is slap his hand like reactively. Let me break down for y'all scientific terms and thin and hood terms what's happening. In scientific terms, his diaphragm is completely contracted and he can't get in the air through because, you know, 
he done fell and lost his air. It happens when you take a big fall, you land on your stomach or your back, it sucks. Now, let me explain to you in hood terms what happened. Damn, that nigga can't work with you. This man, Baki, feel like a whole boulder is on his back right now. This motherfucker can barely even stand. He got Steven Seagal ponytail looking flabbergasted. And I don't even know how that nigga stand it right now. You think he just faking it? Obviously, that motherfucker is fucked up. Look at his body trembling. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Like, god damn. I don't know if Baki can continue after this shit. You think if he die, he'll let me get his bitch? Uh, uh, motherfucker, shut, shut, shut the hell up. So Baki is completely defenseless in this moment, bro. And Pickle feels terrible about it. For some reason, Pickle will inflict a whole lot of pain on you, but then for some reason feel bad about it and then get on your knees and start trying to pray for you and shit. Motherfucker, you put me in this predicament. How you gonna get on your knees and pray for me? And you don't wanna injure me. Baki was not going for that. Now, every other time in his entire life, this man Baki snaps the hell out. The humiliation of seeing his opponent pray for him made his pod take over and he punched this nigga dead in his shit. Man, what the fuck is he talking about? He said, he said I'm about to pray for you, little dude, cause, cause you a you bitch. bitch. I'm about to pray, motherfucker. Don't you put your hands together? You gonna beat my ass and then pray for me, bitch. Oh shit, motherfucker. I'm spitting up blood. Oh, oh, you got me out. Oh, nah, this motherfucker about to punch my ass. And right in this instant, this man Pickle did one of the most disrespectful things I have ever seen. Remember when Baki walked up to him and slapped him real calmly, real gently? This man Pickle did the same thing. Trying to show Baki that, look, my hands aren't deadly weapons. I can touch you real gentle like, and nothing's wrong. Right before our very eyes, this stupid ass caveman is learning. Now, if only he can learn how to be a little less zesty. We didn't forget that you went mouth to mouth with this man, Jack, either. Motherfucker Jack talking about, man, I'm about to have a bite off. Like, pause. Now, Pickle ain't fooling nobody. I don't know why he tried this. We all know that your hands are deadly weapons. They are nuclear bombs with arms attached. But Pickle was basically on some childish shit. This is his way of telling Baki that he wants to play. Now, I don't know why he wanted to act like this. Why he couldn't just have a regular fight. And I have no idea why this is his direct way of playing. Like, bro, we couldn't have played Uno connect four chest checkers i don't know hop on smash bros or something you want to hit me with steel beams with nuclear bombs at the end of them like no bro i'm gonna pass so baki loses his mind after seeing this he is so embarrassed by this that he snaps and it looks like he about to it's take an unalive oh. punch <laughs> bro jumps up at the same distance and plunges to the ground and falls again baki what are you trying to do you trying to have fire dogs lungs you gonna be out here coughing like you got emphysema like you got stage four lung cancer? <coughs> Get the fuck up. Why are you doing this? I don't know if this man Baki was just pridefully trying to prove a point or if he's an idiot. But this man took that fall and everybody's face gave the exact definition of how I felt in this moment. But this is what needed to happen. Now we can get into the real fight. This man Baki was ready to go and got through pain and is ready to inflict pain on Pickle. I mean, kind of, because his whole body is shaking. And you know, that's camouflage because he's in a lot of pain. I'm also trying to prove he's not a bitch, but you know, you know how I go. But you know what's even more crazier than the fact that this man Baki and Pickle fight was a zest fest? The fact that y'all haven't subscribed? Oh my God. Why we gotta go through this every single video? Can y'all just go ahead and hit that subscribe button? Dang, turn the post notifications on, leave a like, a comment, or something. Yo, Duwaji, these niggas is out of pocket. They still ain't subscribed yet, bro. Oh my, oh my god. god, do these niggas wanna be homeless bitches niggas forever? We trying to throw them the law to not be bitches or homeless ever again, but they're deliberately choosing to be bitches without hoes. That's what I'm saying, man. Subscriber, you a bitch. This is the point in the fight, though, where the skill gap comes into play. Remember I told you how Baki had a huge ass skill gap? You know, the one that's the same size as your baby mom's two front teeth? And I know that because I put my whole meat in between them. Feel good, buddy. <laughs> Well, this is exactly what I mean. See, Baki used the very tips of his feet, his heels, his fists to just basically graze this man Pickle's chin, which caused a lot of jarring in his brain. And for the first time in the series, we see this man Pickle take a nosedive. Bro fell completely flat on his face. And that, friends, is what we like to call good boxing. Because God damn, this man Pickle went through all types of fighters and nobody ever could knock him down. Not even the dude that bit his ear off on some Mike Tyson shit and had a mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation fight with him. 
that didn't even knock him down. But this right here, that little ass graze on his chin. Oh yeah, it's raps for him. Hey Pickle, how you like the ground, cuz? He said fuck the ground, cuz he'll beat the fuck out the ground. He also said the ground owes him about $300 from last week. And if it don't pay him by the day, he gonna show the ground why it's the truth. I didn't think that anything was gonna get worse at this point. And then, this happens. You see, Baki used a technique that no one else had thought to use against Pickle because his entire body is a circumference of epidermis, which, you know, for you idiot ass niggas, is skin. And this man, Baki, turned his body into a whip and started hitting him like an 1800 slave. Oh, oh nah. Yo, Baki, I ain't know you was on that Kuta Kenpei shit. Baki was the master of whips. <laughs> Y'all didn't know it, but I did. He started slapping the hell out of this man, Pickle. All right, All right Pickle, so you think that you cold, huh? You think that, you think that I, can't I can't do any damage, damage to you? you. That's, That's your problem. Your problem. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry I gotta do this to you, you big ass, ass bitch. bitch. Man, I can't understand K Man. He, he said, said yo, yo, stop, stop that talking and fight, and fight pussy. pussy. Oh, all right. <laughs> and this man, Baki, started smacking the yeah. out of this man. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Anybody that slapped me to the point where their handprint is left on my body got me chopped. I'm not gonna hold you, and I might shoot you. Slapping is one of the most disrespectful things you can do to another man, in my opinion, at least. Cause imagine you and dude got beef, y'all two about to fight, and then right before you go to punch him, bro smack you. Anywhere on my body, that is a violation, I'm not gonna lie. I felt bad for Pickle, bro. He was getting smacked crazy to the point this man put his hands out like he was trying to defend himself. This man put two stiff arms out like he playing basketball. Damn, he got that man on the ropes. You see him putting his hands out? And I don't know, cause he getting in that all four position. Hey, yo, what's when that that shit that happened to you right before he ate your leg? Man, hell yeah, this motherfucker ate my damn leg. But I forgot he ate my leg. Oh, man, what the fuck? Oh, I can't even walk right. I got a peg leg now, bro. I feel like a Mega Man boss. This is some bullshit. And me and Patsy the Pirate got the same stylist now. I mean, come on, let's look at an eye patch and a bird. He should be a pirate. This is some bullshit. So as soon as this man get into this all four position and he start lunging at this dude, Baki, well, he's about to lunge at him. Aki starts getting into these weird ass positions. Starts doing these dumb ass fighting styles where he's like different animals and insects. The problem is though, the things that Pickle used to lunge at were dinosaurs. This man was living in Jurassic Park, Baki. He was not living in no time where there was tigers, praying mantises, hawks, bears. No, he was lunging at bronchiosaurus, T-Rex, goddamn Shaquille O'Neal. He was lunging at real hitters. So I don't know why this man thought that he was about to be a bear, bro. And then it dawned on me, this man, Baki knew exactly what he was supposed to be doing. He started doing the fighting styles of dinosaurs. Oh, nah. This man posed like a Triceratops and had this man Pickle hallucinating that shit. So you know that you're a real cold ass fighter when you got the dude you're fighting seeing images of dinosaurs behind you. Cause bro, what, what is, is this? This is not, not Power Rangers. Rangers. He's not in a Megazord. What, what is going on right now? Right this man did a pose and had Pickle thinking he was a Triceratops. And I'm not gonna lie, that is by far the most enormous animal that we know about in the dinosaur kingdom. It's big, it's strong, it's got horns, and this man done posed and made Pickle believe that that's what he is. Bro, this dude Pickle got an overactive imagination. He need to go write a book. Well, I guess he don't know how to read or write. He's kind of Floyd Mayweather, but that, that's besides the point. This man Baki started putting in true pain as dinosaurs, pterodactyl, tyrannosaurus rex. Like, oh, nah. Pickle was scared to death. He looking like, yo, I've never seen this. Damn, this motherfucker, this motherfucker, this motherfucker is so different, yo. He got me speaking English right now. Oh, what the fuck? Did this motherfucker just turn into all the dinosaurs at once? Oh, nah. Oh, nah. This motherfucker magical. He, he a short, real motherfucker Harry Potter or something? Oh, some bullshit. But once Baki turned into this amalgamation of all these dumbass dinosaurs, bro got the Triceratops feet and his horn. Pterodactyl wings, the goddamn claws, talons, and feet. The talons of the pterodactyl. 
jaw line of a, 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 a snarl bitch, Natalie Nunn. Even if the bitch was Natalie Nunn, you still couldn't chip check me. You feel me? Some nigga that's a strong ass jaw like a T Rex. Bro, he go to lunge at this dude pickle, and I was like, oh, nah, he's about to put that true pain on me. As a dinosaur. <laughs> Bro, he grabbed Pickle's arm and twisted it with the jaw of a T-Rex, but it was really just his hands. Bro, he was not giving up either. He stayed lunging at him. They all was amazed by that. And then we see this dude Pickle do something that we have never seen him do before. The narrator goes on this long ass tangent about how sprinters try to get as horizontal as they can to make they lift off faster. And this man Pickle got completely horizontal on some Usain Bolt shit. Man is out here moving like he is light speed. Bro, you know that this fight was crazy. They went to like the future tense rep suit to talk about it in an interview. They recording this man and he explaining this Pickle fight on camera. Man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I I couldn't believe this shit. I have no leg because of this dude. He ate it. And I couldn't even believe my eyes. This dude got in a complete horizontal line and launched as fast as I could ever see. Motherfucker, I couldn't even tell. It was so fast, I couldn't even see the shit. I started having all types of uh, epiphanies and crazy ass thoughts. You know, your thoughts be moving like way above light speed, you know, so they just be happening. But th th this shit was crazy. Damn, that is crazy. But why you got them sunglasses why on? Why I got the sunglasses on? Motherfucker, because they look cool. I so Baki drops his guard completely, bro. And as Pickle launches at him at what seems to be above mock speed, and I'm not a power scaler, but you know, I'm just making that up because it sounds cool. This man moves like he a matador and sends Pickle flying into the goddamn benches. Yo, this man Pickle flew into them benches like it was a cheeseburger up there and he hadn't ate in three weeks. Flicked him off with his hand like he was nothing. That shit is crazy. I've never seen no attack like that. What fighting style was it? The craziest thing about it though is that even though he was moving that fast and his momentum was used against him that much, he landed like nothing happened. This motherfucker think he's Zoro. I swear to God. Y'all caught the bar? That was fine. Yo, there's no way that the physics behind this fight make any sense. This man Pickle has the anatomy of an oxen. It, like, oh, oh, nothing works on this dude. It's like nothing can hurt him. I mean, we saw Baki hurt him, obviously. But like, you know what I mean? Now, after Baki realizing that this dude Pickle is fucking insane. I mean, this dude literally took no damage from what seemed to be a fucking 60 foot launch. He sees that the skill gap, like I was saying, is as wide as your baby mom's two front teeth. And I know that because I put my whole meat in it. <laughs> this man Baki decides on some manly shit that he could definitely win this fight. And that's why I said in the beginning that Baki is going to win. You see, this man Baki realizes that if he use martial arts at the current skill level, it's comparable enough that he could win the fight pretty handedly. It's like, for instance, playing Street Fighter 6, since that's a new game that's out. If you play modern controls, you have 20% less damage output. However, that just means that all you have to do is be at least as good as somebody with classic controls as they are modern controls, and you'll win 99% of your fights because you do more damage. Baki was close enough in strength to him that his skill took it over the top, and instead of just beating this dude up, which he could have done, he decided to end it man to man. And these two niggas had a slugfest. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, bro. This shit was crazy. I'm talking about straight hands and feet. This man Pickle stomped on Baki like a thousand times in one second. God damn! How many times you gonna stomp on him? Oh, hit that man with the crazy uppercut. Hold on, this man Pickle out of box now. Bro, he knocked this dude all the way up to the lights. It got to a point where Baki had to dodge every single hit that came from this dude. Because he knew if he got hit with any more of them, he would take too much damage. He's too strong. It got to a point where this man Baki was moving through his opponent. It was like he was transparent or something. Bro, transparent just means a secret. Translucent? No, that's, that's invisible. What is it? Transparent something? Man, this motherfucker was basically trying to point through his goddamn opponent. Oh, he swung at him. He ended up behind him. Like he moved through him. Oh, nah, this dude different. 
This man about to teleport now, like he got future sight or something. And that's exactly what I meant, y'all. The skill level was too wide. So these two barbarian ass men decided they just gonna slug it out. But right before this happens, this man Pickle transforms into what seems to be his true form. His body started transforming right before our eyes. And we see teeth marks on his front and back. And at this moment, all of us realize that he survived the bite of a T-Rex. I wonder that man Jack lost to the bite off. This man Baki realizing that he could just dodge these moves all day long. It's to a point where he just goes head to head with this man. Pickle on some man shit. This is one of the most manliest things I've ever seen in hand. This dude was really putting that paint. True paint. Bro was fighting this dude pickle straight up hand to hand to a point where they had a slug fest and it ended with this man Baki laying on the ground. But like I said, Baki won this fight because he could have used skill to overcome the strength gap. But he instead tried to go strength to strength with pickle and realized, uh, nigga, you was not ready for that match. Well, I knew Pickle and Baki had a great deal of respect for each other, though, because after this fight was over, this man Pickle went and sat on the roof and Baki came and joined him. These motherfuckers just looking over the city and shit. Damn, that was a pure ass whooping. I'm not going to lie. They should have named this shit the ass whoop arc. I'm not going to crap it. <laughs> Because, God damn, we got this strong ass doctor. First off, how is neuroscience is built like this? Motherfucker been lifting with more than his brain. No cat. I mean, he been studying, but he also been lifting in weights. Ain't no way. He decided that he needed to do some tests on Baki, find out what's going on in his body. I mean, after that fight with Pickle, it's got to be some damage done. At least that's what he thought. So then he looks at this dude's brain, and I'm not going to hold you. Is that a motherfucking face? Oh, no. Yo, this man, Baki, got a fucking demon face. Now, you know how my man, Yujiro, got a demon back? Nah, my man, Baki, got a demon face. Bro out here got the face of something at Mortal Kombat. Look at this shit. Oh, no. How this man brain got a nose? Bro, them doctors was in there like, holy f Oh, oh, nah. Hold on. Let me pick up my phone up. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, Korea, come here. Man, come on, Kai. I'm with a bitch right now, Kai. Motherfucker, I don't care if you with a bitch. There's a billion bitches in the world, man. Man, come on. You know I don't get no hoes, cuz. This is like the first time in my whole life I've been with a shorty, cuz. Not everybody look like you, cuz. You can't all be built like Tom Arnold Schwarzenegger. You out here looking like you Hefner. Of course you getting hoes. Hey, motherfucker, just come here. Oh, my God. All right, cuz. I'm here, cuz. Now, what the fuck? Oh, what the fuck is that, cuz? Is that a demon on that fucking brain, cuz? Oh, that's why I called you, bro. This man, Baki, got a demon brain, cuz. Oh, no. Nah. This man possessed. He is a true demon. And right after making this discovery about this brain, bro, I thought that, you know, they might be over-exaggerating or something. And then I saw Baki walking in a park, and there's like a 100,000 rats with him. Bro, what type of weird-ass master splinter shit is this? But what's at least... Man, like a thousand rats! Bro, this man Baki in New York City? He got to be. I'm not going to cat. But anybody that's walking like that and rats is just around them is truly demonic. But you know what's more demonic? <laughs> this nigga right here, this bum-ass, simp-ass, crying-ass dude, Ali Jr. This man was crying and sobbing, getting Baki's girlfriend all wet with his snot and tears. And she was hugging him back on some mother shit. Bro, imagine being in love with somebody and they just tell you straight up that the only reason they were even affectionate with you was because they feel pity for you, that they have motherly intentions. Do you know how that feels? Well, Ali Jr. does. This bum ass nigga spent the whole second half of that one Baki season trying to pull Baki shorty just to get put in a guillotine choke, almost die, and then end up crying and sobbing over her body. What type of shit? And then they randomly just throw it in Bakiyama season two for no reason. That shit led to nothing. I thought maybe there was going to be a character arc with Ali Jr. Especially since this nigga Retsu was in this season with some weird ass boxing art. I'm getting ahead of myself, y'all. But at this point in the story, everything seems to be normal for Baki. He goes back to his regular life. Until this happens. Motherfucker, give me your money, cuz. Oh, come on, guys. Why are you trying to rob me? I don't even have any money. Man, fuck that shit. TJ, pull a knife out on him. Oh, pull this knife out right here? This one I'm about to cut this bitch ass nigga with. 
Yeah, slice them up. Bro, can I just say that you in the back right there, you sound like a golem from fucking Lord of the Rings. Why do you sound like that? Hey, I don't like the way you're talking to me, buddy. Yo, you literally sound like them niggas. Yo, you remember that one scene where the guy was like, we've been eating this maggoty bread for three stinking days. You're the nigga that was like, yeah, how about some meat? Nigga, that's what you sound like right Man, now. fuck you. Got his ass, TJ. In this moment, bro, this dude, TJ, looked at Baki and saw his own death before his eyes. In that instant, this nigga's knife turned from being a whole handheld knife to being a small, very minuscule item you can barely see with the naked eye. Motherfucker was about to die to Baki. If it wasn't for his old butler showing up, we didn't get this entire backstory about Baki being raised by his mom and how he was just a tool for her to get Yujiro's love. And I'm not gonna hold you, that's fucked up. Imagine you live your whole life trying to love your mother and she just got this weird ass relationship where she kissing you in the mouth and shit and the whole time she just buttering you up trying to make you a strong fighter to impress a nigga like this. Bro, this man Yujiro is literally out here raping people, taking what he wants, beating people's husbands up and stealing their shorties and for some reason she in love with him bro this dude not only killed a guy in the ring in front of her but then came to her room beat her husband up and then fucked her in front of her this man yujiro hanma is a true savage somebody that cannot be counted out the saddest thing about all of this is you would think that this very moment right here would make my man baki be like fuck yujiro he's a bitch but it was the exact opposite. It made him admire him, respect him even. This man, Baki, has spent his entire life trying to get strong enough to defeat his father, bro. And at this point, even though this motherfucker killed his mom, he doesn't even hate him anymore. Bro, I don't know what happened. And I don't know how this man, Baki, became such a dick eater. But he out here moving like Jack Hama now. I'm not gonna lie. Ain't no fucking way that you gonna kill my mom in front of me with the Big Show special move. Nigga was out here using an Andre the Giant bear hug on this bitch. And I'm about to just forgive you? Oh, nah. But I mean, it is what it is, bro. There's really nothing we can do. This man, Baki, was down bad. I'm not gonna lie. We gotta talk about two very hilarious things, really, really, really quick. One, this man, Biscuit Oliver, is just having random ass matches with Yujiro, and he's got boxing gloves on. What type of weird ass shit is going on with them? These motherfuckers got fetish fights in a library? These motherfuckers are fighting around a bunch of books. Of all the weird ass places to choose to get folded, this black man chose a place with a bunch of things he's afraid of. Books. We're black, we don't read. At least that's what Boondocks told me. But anyways, after Yujiro folds this nigga, bro literally got his hands cramped up. Couldn't even stand in front of this nigga Yujiro. We find the second funniest thing in this fucking show, Barack Obama. Why the fuck did y'all put Barack Obama in this goddamn show? This shit makes no fucking sense. I'm not gonna hold you, bro. Every time I see Barack Obama in this damn show, I am weak as hell. Cause why did they put him in it? Yo, this might be the most racist thing they've done in this motherfucking show. I'm not gonna lie. This is up there with giving Biscuit Oliver a fat ass white woman as a wife. I'm not gonna hold you. These motherfuckers is perpetuating all types of stereotypes. They got Barack Obama in here impersonating his voice and shit. Uh fellow americans i uh i'm in baki and uh this is truly racist i do not talk like this and i am very upset by the way that my fellow americans have been treating me and my fellow japanese uh mangakas and animators have been putting me in this uh anime uh therefore i will be filing a lawsuit uh, against baki in its entirety and um i will be barring all extra order paraphernalia and anime and manga from america that's right no more one piece for you niggas that's on the white house and i'm from chicago so it's also on phone them grave thank you this motherfucker barack obama is in baki oh nah man i ain't gonna hold you hey you remember strawheim though <laughs> this whole ass try to fight you Gerald, with gunpowder lame ass I'm not even about to spend my time talking about this. You showed up with a pointy ass head with the worst hairline in the show trying to fight this nigga with gunpowder. Yeah, I'm finally about to beat this nigga. I swear to God, I'm about to put this gunpowder in these gloves, throw my crotch for some reason. You know I'm into that weird shit. I like explosions around my dick. I'm gonna put in my boots. 
Oh, I'm about to beat the shit out of this nigga. You sure? I swear to God. Yeah, now where the fuck he at? Oh, what you looking for me, nigga? Oh, oh shit. Oh, you jail? <laughs> what's up, man? Uh, what's going on? Motherfucker, you came here to fight me with gunpowder, you lame ass nigga. Baby, bitch. Oh, oh, what the fuck? This nigga kicked my vest in. Oh, no. Nah. Hey, Jerry, this is a big misunderstanding, cuz I, I swear to God. Oh, you swear to God. It's a big misunderstanding. Man, 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 shut your whole ass up, man. Motherfucker came out here to fight me with goddamn gunpowder, you lame ass bitch. Man, you should have came with an AR 15 or something, motherfucker. Came with gunpowder and no gun. Fuck you think, man? You think this is the 1800s? You about to just kill me with gunpowder? Motherfucker, you think you John Wells Booth? After this embarrassing feat from Strawhan, we then go into one of the funniest character arcs in this season. Ratsu becoming a professional boxer. Cause what the fuck does this man got going on, okay? This man out here trying to become a boxer with a fucking peg leg. What type of shit do you got going on? Bro, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. There's no way that you out here trying to fight and you looking like Seamus from Family Guy now. Ain't no goddamn way. Road trip. Who's in? No, no. Not you, Retsu. No, no, no. Ah, poo. So this man, Retsu, showed up to this random ass boxing gym. And they tell him in order to get in, he's got to prove himself. So he punches a big ass hole in a fucking punching bag. What type of weird ass shit? Man, you're a martial artist. I don't know why this man Retsu wanted to fight boxers so bad. Bro should have just went for Ali Jr. or something. I, I, I don't even know, bro. But anyways, there was a pro there and they humored this nigga. And I'm not gonna lie, they set it up in a way and it made me feel like maybe Retsu was about to lose or something. And then he started talking spicy to this nigga. Hey, uh, not trying to like interrupt anything, but um, I punched a hole in this punching bag and shit. But y'all got like actual fighters or? Uh, are you an actual fighter? <laughs> okay, okay. So we got a pro in the ring right there. <laughs> man, that motherfucker don't want to fight me, man. I'll knock his ass out. Steven Seagal hairstyle ass nigga. Oh, man. You see, I would fight him, but I feel like I'd have to hold back or he'd die. I'll die. Man, shut the fuck up. Hey, somebody put some gloves on this bitch ass nigga. Man, I'm about to knock this fucking grease out of his hair with your dumb ass ponytail, man. I swear to God. What you think, you fire? Man, it look like a middle-aged single mom did your ponytail, bitch ass dude. Oh, man. I don't know why I got to teach you this lesson, bro. How many times do we got to teach you this lesson, old man? Uh, oh, man. Motherfucker, you got a peg leg on. Oh, all right, what's up, then, bitch? Did this man get in the guard to fight Retsu, and I'm not gonna lie, bro. As soon as he threw a punch, man, he moved that little peg leg down and knocked him straight the fuck out with a left hook. Oh, my God. Bro didn't even see the left hook coming. I ain't gonna lie. He was in that ring sleep. Nose was red as shit like he just did four lines of coke. I ain't gonna lie. Motherfucker, nose was red like he got allergies or something. Somebody get him a Benadryl. Because Retsu knocking him out, that's Benadryl. You feel me? I'm hard. I'm gonna get so Retsu realizes that he is completely outmashing everybody in this fucking ring. That there's nobody in this boxing gym that's fucking with him. But he asked him to bring him other boxers. Somebody that he actually could fight and that could do something. So they bring this nigga a heavyweight. Somebody that just came back from the armed forces with cornrows like Allen Iverson. I looked at this dude, seen how big he was, how fast he was moving, and I thought, Bro, I ain't gonna lie, this man Retsu might be in trouble. <sighs> And then he beat the shit out of this dude, too. Man, this dude, Retsu, broke this big-ass black dude down to the gristle. He looked at every weakness that this black dude had, and he took advantage of it. First, his weak-ass grip. Motherfucker got this baby-ass grip, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how in the hell this man, Retsu, could tell his grip was so weak. But basically, he got baby wrist. That motherfucker is not picking up the kettlebells. No cat. And he punched this dude in his hand one time and broke his whole hand in part. Then he realized and calculated his range and used his fucking skull to fuck up his arm. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. This dude was down bad. How you fighting somebody and get picked apart like this? He picked apart this dude like a fat nigga with leftovers. Picked apart this shit like vultures on a piece of meat. I'm not gonna hold you. Like, you got straight broken down by a nigga with the craziest ponytail in this series. Motherfucker out here looking like Rapunzel when you lost to him. That shit out of pocket. Bro, he need to play a different sport or do something. Go, go, go play football or, I don't know, do something. Go try to be in the Olympics for... Being the world's biggest bitch, I, I'm not sure, bro, but there ain't no fucking way that you try to be a boxer not fighting like this. Man, that shit was out of fucking pocket, man. But it got the attention of a fight promoter who decided that he was going to take this man, Retsu, and make him 
a star, make him the best boxer in the world. But before we even talk about how he had a fight with this big ass white dude, we have to talk about this is fit. Cause I'm not gonna lie, there's no way that you're showing up like a created character on fucking Tekken, and I'm not gonna flame you. Cause what type of Super Saiyan One Vegeta hairstyle is you doing? Motherfucker came out thinking he fly too. I know he put that suit on and said, "Oh yeah, you know the bitch is about to love this." The hoes gonna love this. No, they're not. Bro, if you don't get your fucking mismatch ass suit off, boy, it look like you got a Rubik's Cube suit on, zesty ass suit, a fucking fancy Hugh Hefner ass suit, a fucking Playboy Mansion ass suit. I'm really on this nigga. And then he got these dumb ass glasses. What the fuck, what the, what the fuck is those? Bro, does somebody take your glasses and hole punch the frames? Man, get the fuck out of here, cuh. Man, I'm not gonna hold you. This dude hairline is crazy. He got 88 earrings in his damn ears, too. What is he up to? He got six earrings in. Oh, this dude super zesty. You know he be at them gay clubs going crazy with a nigga named Freddy. But they decided to let this dude Retsu fight this big ass guy. Bro was out here big as shit. I'm not gonna lie. He looks at least to be like six foot something, seven foot. I thought he'd be like eight foot. But you know, in Japanese, people be short as shit. So, so a nigga be towering over him and really be six foot three. Motherfuckers walking around like they four eight or some shit. Well, I'm not gonna lie. This man Retsu made a bunch of bricks disintegrate. I, I, I couldn't even. I'm not fighting no grown ass man that's hitting two piles of bricks and they're disintegrating. They can turn these bricks into pure powder. After introducing him to this big ass white guy with a bad haircut, they have a press conference and that was something like this. Uh, excuse me. Um, I have a question for Retsu. Uh, yeah, what's going on, Retsu? Uh, I just wanted to know, uh, what's your professional fighting record? As a martial artist, I don't have a record. I don't count trivial things like that. But I can tell you, however, how many hoes I fucked and how many times I've lost. As you can see, I've never lost to the hoes. But I've fucked about 38 in the last two months, four of which are some of your mothers in the crowd. Uh, motherfucker, did you say fuck my mom? Man, fuck you, Nick. All right, my fault, my fault, I'm getting mad, but... Hey, um, what happened to your leg, bro? <laughs> oh, my leg. You see, I lost it to a fucking primate. Yeah, I got in a fight with a caveman and, uh, motherfucker ate my shit. So, you know. Here I am now walking on a peg leg like Seamus from Family Guy. You heard him make the joke. So you telling me you fought a caveman, got your ass beat, and he ate your leg? Oh, nigga, you're a bitch. So we get into the ring with this white guy, bro, and I felt bad as shit. I'm not gonna hold you. Bro, he hit this dude with a no-inch punch. I've never heard of no shit like that, but that's what she said when I be hitting her with this small-ass meat. You feel me? I be hitting her with that two-inch shrimp, you know what I'm saying? That no-inch punch. All right, first off, pause on that. I'm just playing. But yo, this man really hit him with a no-inch punch. How you get knocked out with a punch that had no momentum? Motherfucker trash. Bro got knocked out by some bullshit and lived to tell the tale about how he went to sleep from it. Big-ass dude laying in the ring. All of that happened. The Retsu got about $30 million. USD. Oh, nah, it ain't yen. My man out here with this motherfucking money, nigga. Stop playing with him. And because of the fact that he actually won this fight, my man Retsu got the opportunity to fight Smoking Joe Frazier. Well, they called him like Smoking. They called him some bullshit. I, I ain't gonna lie. What the fuck they call him? Smoking. 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 Hold on, real quick. I gotta. I gotta go back to the episode because my, my, my dumb ass forgot. Smoking Joe Cruiser. How the fuck they call this man Cruiser? Oh, they named him after the PT Cruiser kind? That's out of pocket. But before we get there, we gotta talk about how this man Chiharu tried to pull up on my man Baki. What the fuck was he thinking? See, Hanayama told him to pull up on Baki and fight him. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know why the hell he did that shit. Bro walked up on Baki and this happened. Yo, hey Baki, what's good, guys? Oh my God, what's up, bro? Hey, cuz, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. It's been a long time since I've seen you, bro. But listen, though, man, fuck all the theatrics. What's up with a fight? What? You wanna fight me? Why? I didn't even do shit to you. Shut all that bullshit up, man. We ain't gotta have no reason to fight. I'm finna knock you the fuck out, boy, because you got me And mid sentence, this man, Baki, knocked this dude Chiharu straight out, bro, with an easy punch. Took it easy on him, but had him slumped in the middle of a road. And this continued over and over and over again. This man Chiharu showed up at his house and everything. I don't know why he was so determined to fight Baki, bro, but he actually started putting some licks in on him. Pause on that, he licked him. 
Bro, he hit this dude with a German suplex in his own crib. Punched him through a door. This man, Baki, even had to admit that he had a crazy fighting spirit and he was strong. But this man, Chiharu, should have had some crazy fighting spirit against whoever put them clothes on him. Your designer is not hitting. And if you picked your own shit out, stop it. You picking clothes out like you blind, cuz. Huh? <laughs> no cat. Bro, this whole fight stopped, though. Because at some point, this man, Chiharu, realized that this man, Baki, was willing to do what he was not. He was his own fucking eyeballs as a weapon. Bro launched at this dude Chiharu and crushed his own eyes to twist and break his hand with him. Using this fucking technique he learned from a roach. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, this man Baki Master is a roach, bro. This dude out here learning shit from big ass bugs, bro. <laughs> Put in pure pain with a bug attack. It don't make any sense, bro. But you know what really don't make any sense? The fact that we're halfway through this video and y'all still haven't hit subscribe. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. I've been dropping straight heat for y'all this entire month. The least you could do is actually, I don't know, leave a like, hit the motherfucking post notifications or something. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. If y'all don't hit this subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. And turn those post notifications on. I'm gonna turn your auntie to what my man Yujiro Hama turned every shorty he encountered into a f thing. I'm about to get your auntie with that dang up lane, y'all. Yo, make sure you hit that subscribe or you're a bitch. All right, back to the video. So, this man Retsu was fighting Smoking Joe Frank. I mean, my bad. Smoking Joe Cruiser. And I'm not gonna lie, he is getting punished. This dude, Joe Cruiser, was rattling this man Retsu's brain the entire fight. Had him recollecting about old training and shit. Every time Rex you fight somebody, he sees some old shit happen. And I'm not going to lie, that shit is embarrassing. Because how the hell are you getting your brain rattled like this? Every time you fight somebody, you about to lose. First, you got your fucking leg eaten by Pickle. Now you in the ring getting beat up by a black guy. As you should. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's beside the point. After having all this PTSD about his training, he realized that he has to hit himself in the brain in order to counteract the shaking, which probably caused tremendous pain, suffering, probably slight brain damage. But you know, I mean, it is what it is. He's in a fight, I guess. Man, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Hey, hey motherfucker. What? Wait, who was that? That's me, man. Oh, shit. OG, what's good? Hey. How am I supposed to do that, OG? Man, you gotta punch it at the right time to counteract it with your own punch. Stop the shaking with more shaking. I mean, you're probably gonna forget your name and how to count. And you'll probably get CC in the next like 10 years. But it is what it is. That's what sports do to a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're right. I got it. Then this man punched himself in the brain, got right, and started beating the fuck out of this man smoking Joe. He hit him with an illegal punch, though. I'm not gonna lie. Bro used his damn knuckle and punched him in the little middle part right under your nose i forgot what he called it but his whole body went numb motherfucker fell down to his knees when the lord came you feel me i'm not gonna lie bro this man joe cruiser got punished all of that happened bro and this man russell even got congratulated by the world champ which is crazy so the entire time this has been going on baki has had this weird ass love-hate relationship with his father a relationship in which his father was going to come to dinner see baki wanted his dad to cook for him which is crazy and when he told Strawhound that shit, he pretty much laughed in his face while he was smoking that cancer cigar he always on. This man Ujiro hears about this shit, and he seems like he's mad at first, but then tells this man Dopo Orochi that he's in love with his son. First off, pause, because what type of shit is you on? Why are both Baki's parents loving him the way they do? I ain't gonna lie, they show affection weird. You got Baki's mom kissing him in the mouth, now you got Ujiro saying he in love with him. But instead of actually giving him love, he'd be beating the shit out of him every time he see him. I don't know, man. Seems kind of dysfunctional to me. But what do I know? I've never had any true validation from my parents ever. So after going on these weird ass excursions where he comes to dinner, then invites Baki to dinner, they have this kind of disagreement. And Yujiro feels like he has to reprimand his son. And oh, nah. The time has come 
When this motherfucking waiter walked in, he saw Baki with his hands on Yujiro's collar. And I knew right then that this fight was about to start. And soon, we'd have a conclusion. Because this man, Yujiro, knocked this bitch ass nigga outside of a window with a spank to his ass. And you're probably wondering, oh my God, son, what happened? Well, he grabbed him in the face, jumped out the window, and they were fumbling to the ground. And they're about to hit the ground. I'm not going to lie. As he was falling, I thought to myself that this man, Baki, is going to die. There's about... 12 police officers are down there with riot shields on some Black Ops 2 shit, waiting and seeing what is about to happen. And the entire time, this man Baki has the look of someone that is terrified on his fucking face. I mean, uh, uh, editor zoom in on his face. And why does this man Yujiro always look like this? Bro got the wrinkliest face I've ever saw in my life, but got the muscles of a nigga that's doing the world's strongest man competition. And right about now, he should be. Oh my God. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I can't believe that he just pile drive this man Baki into this fucking car like this, bro. This shit look like some monster truck shit. You, you know how them fat ass trucks be driving over cars? That's what that car looked like. Now, of course, there's going to be some super boxy physics to this. I mean, that's just how this anime works. The narrator explains to us that if, if you are falling through the sky at whatever fucking feet and you spread out in a certain way that the impact... Basically, he made it so him and his motherfucking son don't die. But that's besides the point. That's not what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is how this man grabbed his grown-ass son by the face and slammed him into a car down there. Bro, somebody might have had to use that car for something. Bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. That probably is a single mother's car. She will never go to the grocery store again. And why are these police officers here like this, like they can do anything about it? You want to combat a man that is grabbing an 18-year-old's face like it's a fucking basketball and holding him in the air? Oh man. I told this bitch ass nigga I was going to slam him in the car. I don't know why I didn't listen to him. What the fuck y'all cops looking at, huh? God damn. Yo, chief, he, he really slammed his son into a car. Man, don't you think I can see that, motherfucker? I'm right here. Man, man will y'all shut the fuck up now, son? It's time to get up so I can continue beating your fucking ass. And as this man, Yujiro, goes to grab Baki's hand, as he asks him so politely to help him up, I'm like, oh, look, these guys are actually helping each other like father and son should. <sighs> Is what I would like to say, but this man, Baki, slapped the fuck out of Yujiro. Well, I'm not going to lie. I can't believe that he slapped this man like this. This is a grown ass man we're talking about. Anybody that ever slaps me in my face is getting these fucking hands. Unless it's, you know, a woman. And in that case, I'll probably just let it slide the first few times. But after like the third hit, I'm going to slam you on your fucking neck. Equal rights. Get these equal rights and lefts. You feel me? I'm just saying. But he slapped this dude in his fucking face. Bro, I'm not going to cap to you. I knew that this man Baki was getting punished after he did this shit. Because who in the fuck did he think he was slapping Yujiro, the ogre Hanuma, in the face? As soon as he slapped him, bro, the narrator breaks it down like Baki was slapping something of the weight of a huge ass mountain, a big ass boulder or something. It had no effect on Yujiro. Oh, it just shit. made him mad. And then he Go hit that nigga with the cleanest rights I've ever saw. Bro, he knocked this man Baki into a mall and started walking through a crowd of police officers who then scatter like roaches when the lights come on. This man said, get the fuck out of my face without even talking. He is reprimanding his son. He goes in and grabs him by the cheek. Bro, I do not want any person grabbing my cheek that's not my grandmother. He picks him up like that. Bro, if you're holding me by my fucking cheek, pause on that that was crazy and you throw me like i'm a piece of trash nah you got it i want no smoke with you bro no cap he tossed baki like a piece of luggage bro i'm not gonna cap and then this dude baki gonna get up and do this all right pops since you want to throw me like i'm a fucking baseball or something i guess i'm gonna have to get serious with you <sighs> did you just take your damn shoes off Oh. Put them smelly ass chucks back on, man. Oh, I know you ain't just kicked them shit in my face, cuz. Uh, Rocky, I'm about to beat your ass. I swear to God. Br bring your soft ass over here. Oh, so first off, Pops, I'm gonna have to say pause on that. There should be no adjectives about my ass coming out of your mouth. What the fuck? Uh, bitch! Bitch! Uh, bro, he slapped this dude, Baki, like he was 
punishing his son. And that's what he was doing. This entire time, well, most of the fight at least, it felt like just a punishment, bro. He spanked this nigga, hit him on his bare ass, and knocked him into an escalator. But you know what was about to get serious, though? Because this man, Ujiro, brought out the whip style. Now, I'm not going to lie. This is a February exclusive, a Black History Month lesson for all of you. Anytime I hear whip, I get PTSD. I'm not going to lie. White folks be like one day away from making us go back to them fields. I'm not playing with them niggas. Because you will have to send a SWAT team to get me to pick cotton. No cat. But this man, Baki, got smacked with the whip style. And the pain that this nigga went through, he was screaming ow, ooh, ah, 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 like a grown ass bitch. Bro was holding his leg on the ground in a fetal position, bro. Motherfucker had saliva in his mouth and shit, bro. I'm like, oh, nah. But my man Baki wanted to spin the block, bro. And that is where the image on this thumbnail came from. Because this man Baki hit him with the whip style back. And instead of actually being hurt, oh, nah. This man Yujiro just flexed his entire body, bro. His whole fucking muscles flexed. So the pain got dispersed over everywhere. Oh, you can't even hurt you, Jiro, because he's going to flex his muscle so hard he doesn't feel it. This is ridiculous. His chest, his stomach, his hips, his arms, his fucking legs, his face. He flexed every ounce of muscle on his epidermis, nigga. And that skin for you dumbass dudes that skip science. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Just the way you Jiro stand be pissing me off. Cause why does he stand like that? He got a like hunched over position with long ass arms. This motherfucker is looking like a wacky, flatable, flail arm, flailing tube man in this bitch. And I know I just said that wrong. I'm not gonna cat. But you Jiro knows that this man Baki is playing. And because of this, he asked him to get serious. And at this point, the little ass old dude shows up and tells them that they got the entire mall to themselves and no one will intervene in their fight. All right, son, it's time to get serious. Man, Pops, what do you mean get serious? I've been fighting you for real this whole time. Oh, shut your ass up. You ain't been serious at all. Lie to me again, motherfucker. I'm gonna have you eating applesauce for a week. Applesauce? Can I at least get put in? No, motherfucker, you ain't Bill Cosby. Man, what the hell? Hey, hey, Baki. Hey, man, go ahead and get serious with this bitch, man. You got this shit. Yes, sir. Hey, oh, man, you want me coming out there and beat your short ass up, nigga? Man, I'm just saying, man. I'm trying to root them on, cuz my fault. Man, but Baki, look, man. I shut the whole mall down for y'all, man. Everything. I shut down the Gucci store, Javanti, Neiman's, all that shit, man. So if y'all need any drip afterwards, man, go ahead, go in there and get what y'all need. What the fuck? What? Man, you heard the fuck I said. So at this point, bro, this man, Ujiro, is fed up with Baki. Knocks this nigga into a fucking wall, bro. And I knew at this point that, oh, yeah, if it hadn't got serious already, it's serious now. Motherfucker is making implants of his body in fucking walls and shit. So Baki uses his fucking roach attack. I ain't gonna lie to you. This roach shit is the weirdest shit ever, bro. Bro has copied a fucking roach. Tackle his father with the speed of a goddamn... What, what is this? A, a cockroach attack, nigga? Of all the things you could have copied. Man, I guess it makes sense, because them all the roaches be moving fast and shit, bro. Growing up in the hood, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. You be eating food, bro. You turn the light on, bro. It be roaches standing there, like, hovering over your food, salivating, waiting. Hey, yo, you gonna finish that? My, my, my motherfucker, get the fuck out of my face. I ain't gonna lie, this man Baki tackled his dad through the wall. Hit him with a kick. Hmm. Damn. Knocked him into the wall. Those started flying through different stalls in a bathroom and shit. I'm like, oh, nah. This man, Ujiro, was ready for that shit. I ain't gonna lie. Ujiro be weird, though, because he be getting turned on by getting attacked by his son and all that. Like, hey, what's up with this big brolic ass nigga, man? <laughs> Basically, this man, Baki, has learned to be water. Nah, vapor when he fights, which is actually pretty cool. He makes his whole body super loose, like he's liquid, and then evaporates. And right before he attacks, he gets tout again. And it's like an explosive ass attack. The biggest problem with this is, though, that this man, Ujiro, is just too big, too strong, and too skilled. So he picks this nigga Baki up and hits him with like a German suplex power bomb. I don't even know what the fuck that is, but you need a whole special meter in WWE SmackDown vs. Raw to do that shit. So this man, Ujiro, is finally outside, and everybody in the world has showed up to watch this fight, bro. Yeah, yeah, Ujiro! No, fuck Ujiro, cuz. Hey, Baki beat that nigga. Cuz, fuck you, man, Ujiro. Stop on his Oh, fight. my God. Breaking news, breaking news. Everyone, everyone, right now, you 
Jero Hanma and Baki Hama are actually fighting. They are outside going the fuck in right now. Everybody needs to tune in. If you're not in downtown Tokyo, you need to get there. It is crazy out there. I saw everyone out there. Shaquille O'Neal was there. Snoop Dogg. The one nigga that shot that guy in Walmart. Uh is the fact that y'all have not subscribed yo i'm about to break down to y'all what's going to happen if you don't subscribe turn on those post notifications like and leave a comment on this vid i'm gonna be real real clear with y'all first off i'm fucking your aunt i'm not gonna lie i'm breaking her back they call me aunt back breaks in you feel me i'm i'm really on that shit i'm I'm making your fucking arm up, nigga. Then I'm gonna get your granny. I'm gonna get her pregnant and have a son, and you gonna have an uncle, nigga. I'm not playing. Make sure you subscribe, or you're a bitch. Simple as that. But if you do subscribe, I ain't gonna lie, you can get about 3,000 hoes. You gonna wake up tomorrow with 3,000 hoes on your dick if you hit that subscribe button. You gonna wake up with 10 million cash in front of you. You feel me? Yo, back to the video. So this man, Ujiro, standing there looking all ominous, don't got no pupils in his eyes. Bro's out here looking like a demon and shit. Bro getting turned on because he tastes blood. Weird ass nigga. A uh, 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 necrophiliac ad nigga. <laughs> a Dracula ad nigga. What, what's going on, man? I'm really on it. All right, my fault, my fault. But yo, this man starts flexing and his hair starts floating like he got an invisible aura about him. What is going on with this man, Yujiro Anma? Bro, even Dopa Orochi showed up out here looking like Slick Rick. Bro got a damn eye patch on. I Oh my God, a pocket. So once again, this man Baki has made himself water, bro. It is really time. I'm not gonna lie. And he goes to tackle Yujiro. The problem is, how you gonna try to hit Yujiro with the same move twice? Motherfucker, do you know who this is? This is big Yujiro, cuz. You can't use the same move twice on him? Bro was disappointed, I ain't gonna lie. He face palmed the shit out of Baki. This man Baki is down bad. Tears in his eyes, motherfucker. Whole face is bleeding, nose running, knees weak, arms is heavy, he's vomit on the sweater already. Yujiro spaghetti, he nervous. <laughs> this motherfucker going crazy. Again, those that swing on Yujiro gets face palmed. I'm not gonna lie, he is stiff arming and shit. And you can't be out here fighting your dad. God damn, hold on real quick. Why he spitting all that fucking blood out his nose like that? Bro, I ain't gonna lie, I know he about to die of blood loss. Somebody get him a transfusion. He was out here bleeding like his nose, like Sanji from Fishman Island, bro. And this motherfucker ain't see no mermaids. I'm not gonna lie. But it doesn't matter what Baki does, bro. This man, Yujiro, is blocking every single attack. I feel bad for Baki, bro. It's like, no matter what he does, it's getting stopped. Bro, these motherfuckers is moving at goddamn light speed, bro. I ain't gonna lie, though. This man, Baki, out here on some zesty shit, dude. He talking about... Go ahead, play with him. Let him play with you. Bro was envisioning himself playing with his dad as a baby. And that's what this fight seemed like. He beating this motherfucker up like he a toddler or something. So this man Baki does exactly what he can do. He starts doing these dumbass dinosaur poses. The craziest thing about it though, is that this man Yujiro has wanted to fight dinosaurs his whole life and he's never got a chance to. This time seeing his son and envisioning it like this has got him super excited. And he takes Baki head on. It's so crazy, he steamrolled this man Yujiro into a minivan and pushed it over. Bro out here fucking up soccer cars. This man Yujiro is mad pause though, he talking about. I love feeling that raw prehistoric power like what the fuck oh no nah. this whole time it's like these two was fighting and making love and shit but the fucked up thing about this next part was that yujiro completely shit on this man baki whole fighting style so you know how baki be envisioning these animals these dinosaurs he be posing he be making the poses of them and fighting like them this man yujiro said he's about to show you the ultimate pose fist i forgot what it's called i ain't gonna lie your voice in do not be paying attention to the vocab and this shit but just know this nigga was about to pose and beat this man baki ass and on some cocky shit he poses as himself yujiro hanma the real strongest creature in the world is himself bro i gotta see this man yujiro versus Kai right now i'm not gonna hold you bro how you gonna pose as yourself bro did the damn attack basically perfect i felt bad for this nigga baki but this next part in the fight really confused me bro not because i didn't understand what was happening but because i never thought i'd see it in a million years this man yujiro hama has finally praised baki y'all hey son come here real quick man my 
motherfucker, we're in the middle of a fight. Man, man come here, man. I wanna pat your head. Pat my head? What, nigga, what? Bro, I just wanna show you how proud I am of you, Baki. Come here. I really wanna grab the top of your head so I can show your barber where he need to shape you up right the next time. Your hairline ridiculous, but come here so I can pat your head, boy. Motherfucker, you, you dead ass right now? Yeah, I, I'm proud of you. And because of this, this man Baki started crying like a baby back bitch. I'm not gonna lie, tears was coming down his face. He didn't know what was going you're on. So, you're so cruel to me, Dad. Like, you gonna wait till I'm goddamn 18, nigga, to praise me and shit? Like, my whole life, you ain't done nothing for me, nigga. You ain't got me no new J's. You ain't taught me how to pick up shorties, nigga. I got no riz. The only reason I got the girlfriend I got is because I can fight good. Nigga, if I couldn't fight, she won't fuck with me, cuz. You see how she was playing Ali Jr.? Like, come on, man, this is some bullshit. Man, I can't do it, Pops. I ain't gonna lie. I can't let you pat me on the head, nigga, because this is gonna make me look like a bitch out here in front of everybody, cuz, and I'm trying to see if I can. Yo, Baki, shut your ass up. Now come over here, I'm gonna give you a fucking hug, teach you what true strength is, bitch. This man grabbed Baki. Did this nigga just make him bleed out his nose, touch it with his finger, and lick it? Oh, nah, this nigga is nasty. Bro, this man super dirty, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Cause this man, Pickle, got reprimanded, bro. This dude, Baki, hit his ass and knocked the tooth out his mouth and had him sitting down like a little bitch. But it was the first time he ever got handled like that. The narrator was like, God damn, nigga, I ain't never seen Pickle be like this. This nigga sat down on some whole ass shit. Motherfucker was like, <laughs> What the fuck he say, man? He said, damn, nigga, why you have to sit me down like that? I don't even like sitting pretzel style, cuz. I don't even like pretzels. That shit was crazy. This man Ujiro gonna ask this nigga Baki if he jealous. Not only did Pickle get sat down like a bitch by Baki, then this man Ujiro still got the one up him and flex his power again by asking his damn son if he jealous. Ain't no way I would never in my whole life let this happen to me. Well, I probably would though, cause it's Ujiro, but but y'all know what I'm saying. So at this point in the fight, these two niggas decide to have a pants off. And by a pants off, pause on that by the way. I mean, these motherfuckers are putting their hands in their pockets on that shit that like biscuit Oliver and uh that one dude did I forgot and they're deciding that they're about to fight each other and see who's quicker on the draw and just like that bro this man Ujiro hits this dude Baki with something crazy I mean insane the whole time this dude Biscuit Oliver is watching as this man Baki about to get hit in his chin and then turns it into a tiger king which seems to be putting a knee on the back of this nigga's neck and got his arm in some sort of submission. Well, I'm not gonna lie, bro. This nigga hit this dude, you Gerald, so hard that this dude, Biscuit Oliver, got excited. Like, his fat-ass wife was with him or something. This motherfucker was veins popping out. He's like, yeah, this nigga Baki strong. Yeah. And the whole time, I'm like, yo, Biscuit, you gotta chill, yo. Pause. But none of that even mattered, though, because this man, you Gerald, outpowered this dude, Baki, bro literally just got out of the hold and there was nothing he could do about it i ain't gonna lie i don't think there's anything at this point that this man baki could do to ujiro to stop him and i know that's not saying much because obviously it's fucking ujiro but the fact that this man baki is even staying in this fight is impressive this fight got so crazy bro that they saw an envisionment of their fucking grandfather and father Yuchiro Honda. This man show up, start talking to this dude, Yuchiro, like, yeah, bitch. I'm like, yo, even the grandfather's cold. Oh, nah. Hey, what's up, little dudes? <laughs> what up, grandson? Man, you looking good out here. Hey, what's up, Yuchiro? Little bitch. <laughs> hey, what's good, though? Wait, is that my grandfather? Oh, shit, P Pops? Man, it's me live in the flesh, man. Hey, listen, man. I ain't gonna lie, Baki, you can beat your dad. That motherfucker a bitch, I ain't gonna lie. If I was still alive right now, I'll show you how to beat him. I'll put that pain in on this bitch ass. You know, I survived the new. Man, Pop, shut your ass up, you dead, nigga. Man, I don't know if he dead or not, though, Pops. Like, because granddad right there, like, we both see him. Man, shut your ass up, man. It remind me of this movie he had, though. Uh, it's called The Dress Down. I mean, not Dress Down, what's it? D dress? Uh, motherfucker, I I'm gonna do this to you. Bro, he started whipping this dude Baki around like he's a fucking nunchuck. He used him as like a pair of nunchucks, bro. Started <laughs> on some goddamn Mortal Kombat shit, bro. Started whipping this dude Baki around like he is nothing. Like he is literal 
garbage, bro. Ain't no fucking way that he did this to this grown ass man. Bro, he started punishing him and then his fucking endorphins kicked in, bro. Every time this man Baki about to get punished by somebody, them shits kick in. His girl shows up. I'm like, bro, it's going on at this point. Bro, his girl showed up talking that shit. Oh my God, will you guys just finish this fucking fight? You've been fighting all fucking day. Bro, Baki, I am tired of this. You told me that tonight we could watch Grey's Anatomy and you give me some dick. Oh my God. I did tell you that, huh? Oh, fuck, Dad. Anyway, we can make this fight last the next 300 years so I'll die of old age. What the fuck? Are, I kind of feel you, though. Know? Grey's Anatomy ass. Bro, they was getting into it after this, bro. That's all the pep talk this man Baki needed. The threat of Grey's Anatomy was too great. Because this man Baki tried everything in the world to beat his dad at this point. Started hitting all type of exquisite ass combos. But in the end, man, this dude, Ujiro, hit this dude with a 40 piece and knocked his ass down. And I ain't talking no Popeyes, nigga. That was a 40 piece with straight hands. Had this dude Baki laying down like he was a pure bitch. And even though Baki is going to admit that he lost this fight, Ujiro actually named him the winner, which is crazy. Bro sat down and made him a meal, which is insane to think about that this man Ujiro would have humbled himself like that, but then he proclaims that he is no longer the strongest creature, the strongest man in the world. It's Baki now, which is cat, but like, damn, must have took a lot for him to say that. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna hold you. I have no idea what's next for Baki, y'all, but I've been reading some of the manga, and that shit is crazy. So I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna say this right now at the end of the video, but I'm also gonna make my editor put it at the beginning of the video too. So y'all niggas can get it. So I'm gonna say this right now. Before we get into this video, but also this is the end of the video. This is crazy. I'm speaking to y'all from the future and the past and the past and the future. If you get this video to at least 15,000 likes. You a real ass nigga for real, yo.